In the last video, we compared the autofocus performance of the brand new Rokinon 35mm f1.4 to the much more expensive Carl Zeiss 35mm f1.4. Now in this video, we're going to take a closer look at image quality. I tested both lenses on a full frame Sony a7R Mark II. Let's get started. First, I tested the most obvious image quality metric, sharpness. Center sharpness of both lenses is pretty good, but the Rokinon is actually a little bit sharper in the center. Both lenses struggle a bit in the corners wide open, but remain competitive with each other as you stop down. So while the difference between the two isn't huge, the Rokinon is the sharper lens of the two, which is particularly impressive if you consider that it's only half the price. Let's move on to bokeh, the way each lens renders out of focus areas. Here the differences are a little bit more obvious. The Zeiss shows less outlining with smoother out of focus areas overall. The Rokinon isn't bad either, but not quite at the same level. Here's another sample image. Notice the outlining on the leaves in the Rokinon shot. If you're all about that bokeh, the Zeiss does pull ahead here. One thing that really stood out to me when looking over my test images is how differently these two lenses render color. The Rokinon is quite a bit warmer when shooting manual white balance. I'd say it's about 200 degrees Kelvin warmer, which is much more than I expected. Overall, I do find the colors from the Rokinon to be a bit more pleasing straight out of the camera. Since it's very subjective, we'll call this one a draw, but do note that there is a very major difference in the color rendition between these two. Let's talk about color fringing. And let's be honest here, they both suck. Out of focus areas often suffer from green and purple fringing and the edges of the frame are especially problematic. So is one better than the other here? Well, not really. They both kind of suck in their own special way. It's a common problem with large aperture primes, but I'm especially disappointed in the performance of the Zeiss here since it comes with such a hefty price tag. In the color fringing test, there is no winner, just two losers. Let's move on to distortion and vignetting. I didn't do any scientific testing here, but both lenses had about the same result. Minor, easy to correct distortion and minor vignetting. Again, we have a draw. In terms of flare, both lenses can have some pretty nasty flare in the worst case scenario. It was interesting to see how the flare changes as you change the aperture. Note the different flare pattern here on the Zeiss, especially when you're comparing f1.4 to f8. The Rokinon's flare was just as strong, but probably a little bit easier to correct if you needed to. When shooting directly into a bright light source, there was also no clear winner. Both lenses handled the flare quite differently though. Notice the very strong star-shaped flare with the Rokinon, as opposed to the rather smooth halo on the Zeiss. It's definitely a matter of taste here. I will say that I didn't have any major flare issues in normal everyday shooting situations. So what's the conclusion? I was really looking forward to pitting these two lenses against each other. They both ended up trading blows. The Rokinon is sharper and the Zeiss has better bokeh. There are distinct differences between the two and it really comes down to what you personally prefer. If you're all about that bokeh, the Zeiss is probably the way to go but if you care more about sharpness or warmer colors, then the Rokinon is probably a better bet. One thing I did want to mention is that at the same aperture settings, the Zeiss images were consistently brighter than the Rokinon shots by about one third to a half stop. That may be something to keep in mind if you're shooting in really low light and every little bit counts. With all that said, I can't really call a clear winner here, if you don't consider the price. But when you do take the price into consideration and add it to the equation, it's really easy to recommend the Rokinon, coming in at about half the price of the Zeiss. Of course, there are other factors to consider, which I'll cover in a full review in the future. In the meantime, I did make a comprehensive autofocus test between these two, so be sure to check that out. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, I would appreciate if you would consider subscribing or hitting the like button. If you have any questions about these lenses, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you, and I'll see you in the next one.